Hello, good day everyone. This is John Rel and Joni of JAP Migrate. We are on our third podcast discussing our topic is safest countries in Europe. Safest countries in Europe and this would be a very good topic for everyone because um, Europe boasts a very safe um, environment for migrants and if you're wanting to migrate that's what we deal with all right so this is what we put forth to a lot of our applicants when you move here it's gonna be a safe environment for you because Europe is um, the safest region in the world that's a fact you can go look in Google and actually we we tried a bit of research as well <laughs> so that's what we're going to be talking about the safety of Europe and um, you know a little bit of information about how they got to that kind of um, level through countries that offer the safest environments all right so yeah buckle up and we're going to be um, discussing more of that actually um, just to give you some update we are right now in the middle of a park um, on the grass like on the on the ground <laughs> uh, um, sitting on a picnic cloth having a bit of picnic as we usually do <laughs> so it's a beautiful day so yeah hopefully you guys can like join us here virtually but anyway if you migrate here you'd, you'd be enjoying the same thing so that's where we are right now just to remind everybody what we do JIP migrate we enable possibilities to those who are ready, ready to, move. to move if you want to migrate we are here to help and we have a couple of programs first of all our most popular open status program yes yes so um open status program recently a couple of um, people who are in the again i think i told this um last week um applicants from cruises ships yes. yeah ships and um, engineers and architects okay so uh, these people they want to bring their families and want to migrate to europe because they're quite um what well it's their words they're quite sick <laughs> of their country i don't want to tell you where they are where where they come from but that's what they said and um you know at, at, at certain levels i kind of agree because there are lots of corrupt countries there that really just suck people out of out of their money and put them into their miseries and um you know europe is just a much better offer and environment for them so that's how they see it it that, that's their words and um yeah i'm just sharing it to you now so most of our uh people who get into this program are professionals and um yeah by families as well so if you're if you're a professional you want to uh you want to bring your family here in europe there's always a way you can see it here with this open status program doesn't need you to study anymore unlike canada or australia where you have to go there spend a lot of money lots 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 of money and then you'll have to be a student so you can't really focus on just working and um, earning years for citizenship in the future that's not even guaranteed in canada or australia but here in our program it is it is guaranteed that you will become a, um, a permanent resident yeah in the future and citizen in the future if you stay long enough depends on the countries okay so that's what we have our open status program next yeah we have our business, business pathway. pathway program all right this one recently we've had some uh, virtual agencies um, that deal with travel and those kind of things you know they, they mainly do their businesses online and we have recently um, ha had applicants for our business pathway program and they want to run their business registered under Europe you know a, a European country so <clears throat> What that will give them is um, more security because mm -hmm. Europe protects uh, the companies here. Yes, yes. against, you know, um, we have EU has very um, diverse laws into protecting especially privacy and the well-being of the company, you know, the rights of, um, you know, earning money and spending and employment, these things. All right. EU is the most advanced there, especially for businesses. So. Um, we have had um, solopreneurs coming in to uh, apply for this program so we're very proud of that we're very uh, proud to help these um, solopreneurs doing their business online and putting their business here in Europe and hopefully they can bring their families as well because that's going to come on later when they start doing their business here they'll be a bit more stable and then bring their families here or they can always just do the business and just move here and 
um, operate uh, while they're here. It's also possible. All right, so that's our business pathway program, and we also have next is student, student pathway, pathway program. This one we really haven't been <laughs> focusing on, but we have it there. All right, so um, most of our applicants go for open sets program or business pathway because um, it it's a I think it's more flexible. But you know, if your focus is really studying, then go ahead for this program. You know, and. Um, it's, it all depends on people's priorities. So yes. in our case, most of our applicants really prioritize just moving in with their family, mm -hmm. working, what else? Like, yeah, doing business. Most of our applicants are like that. But who knows? Maybe there will be more younger applicants in the future and then they really want to study. Then this program would be ready for them. All right. So those are what we have. Oh, by the way, before we, because we have new programs in the process, right now um we also have opened an asylum program for those refugees who want to seek refuge in europe that's going to be very helpful for those um we recently have had a lot of applicants from africa mm -hmm. yeah and, and apparently african countries they have a lot of civil wars there it's very unstable so um we've opened an asylum program for those kind of people so if you are from those kind of countries which have um, you know unstable government it's un unsafe it's dangerous to stay there's always um, a refuge here in Europe they can also work here so we're very excited to offer that as well again showing that JIP migrate is expanding through teamwork that's what we always say okay. Yeah, team teamwork. Can't do it just me and Joni. You know? <laughs> Can we do it just the two of us? No. No. So be careful of those people who pretend to be experts, but you know you can see them. They're just copying people. <laughs> so be careful if you're going to um, have your migration concerns taken care of. Make sure it's with an an expert company. It's an expert team. Like JP Migrate, we are a team. We we address um different. Um, problems through different departments of our company so be careful of those one man kind of um, uh, one man team that I, I don't believe in, in such if you want to make big results you have to have a big team that's what we always say all right so just a kind of advice to all of you there all right so maybe let's get into the topic are we on the topic yet uh, yes, yes. The safest countries all in right. Europe. so what's gonna happen here guys is uh, most mostly it's um, Joni is going to give you some information on because we did a bit of research and um, we've come up with some numbers yes. for you that you are measuring the safety uh, the, yeah the safeness of the um, countries in Europe all right so first one yes first one uh, the level of self, uh, the level of safety varies from one European country to another and some European countries are much safer than others uh -huh. okay the first one we have here is Iceland Iceland opening the list of the fastest countries uh, safest sorry Safe, not, Safe. not fastest <laughs> they're not running okay Safe, <laughs> safest countries in Europe is Iceland which has ranked as the safest country worldwide for more than 10 years 10 consecutive years wow. we have another info violent crimes like murders are almost negligible and almost like Iceland. nothing right negligible yes, yes. Mm -hmm. rate of 1.5 murders per year <laughs> just one and a half what 1.5 murders in a year so in a year there's only one guy who died and the other one just like half. half dead probably <laughs> or half killed <laughs> so it's that safe <laughs> other crimes right. like vandalism theft and mugging all stay under 15 percent oh my gosh which translates as very low very low mm -hmm. about armed robbery and assault must uh, have a rate of 19.65 percent as recorded yes okay, bye. So it's very very safe in mm -hmm. iceland it's actually world uh, the world's safest country according to a lot of polls Yes. Uh, I mean polls like um, you know uh, statistics mm -hmm. so Iceland not to be um, confused okay some people are still confused Iceland oh there's a lot of ice there well there's a bit of ice there but it's not really what you would think as in land of ice you know it's actually a lot of volcanoes as well yes. <laughs> but it's a very wonderful country um, I, as I've heard please fact check this but I, I think uh, they don't have an official army 
yeah in Iceland and uh, and they're still safe because uh, I guess with the location the geographic location they have mm-hmm. it's generally you know um, not conflicted with war this kind of um, location and people there are just you know um, I guess advanced more educated and they don't really um, experience poverty I think one of the main reasons for crime is poverty mm-hmm. you know sometimes you're just um, people are just pushed to their limits and you know they're just um, they result to crime because they're just they can't have food to eat and then that's what they teach to their children I mean I know this from because we come from Philippines and it's a fairly fairly oh, um, unsafe country a lot of criminals and that's what's been going on I mean if you have a lot of pe- poor people I, I mean no no judgment to poor people because we were poor as well um, you're just pushed to that kind of um, corner where you have to resort to resort to some kind of things you know so I think that's one of the main reasons why crime um, you know is maximized so yeah when when you have countries like Iceland who doesn't really experience poverty then you have a much safer environment so kudos to Iceland for being the safest country in the world for like 10 years Um, yeah consecutively yeah 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 so that's Iceland there you go next on number two we have Ireland Ireland all right Uh, it has a very little risk of natural disaster Mm -hmm. boasts safe and reliable mass transportation and has yeah. low instances of petty crimes such yes. as pickpocketing and muggings and even lower rates of violent crime. Alright, let's see some numbers. Mm-hmm. In Ireland, it says crime rates and statistics for 2021 was 0.44. <laughs> 0.44. Mm-hmm. A 33.87% decline from yeah. 2020. See. And for, they almost eradicated it, yes. you know, almost zero. Mm-hmm. And for 2020, it was 0.67, a 2.08% increase from 2019. In, that's increased already. Mm-hmm. From that's, the last year, which did, was... Yeah, but it, it didn't even reach 1%. One, <laughs> no, 1%. No, no. Yeah. It did not. Because in 2019, it was 0.65. Mm. Uh, it was 18.98% decline from 2018 and so on. Wow, wow. See, the, these numbers just tell you. Um, I think, again, uh, going back to that point where poverty plays a big role in uh, the, the numbers here, the crime rates, um, when Ireland, you know, um, advanced with their economy because of big companies like Apple going there, uh, it really affected uh, and really decreased their crime rate because a lot of a lot more people have jobs now you know and people when people have jobs they don't have time for crime right? yeah. yes and they don't have reasons for crime they don't have time they don't have reasons and um, it's just a much better situation when you have an econ- economy um, exploding like this and Ireland is one of the most miraculous economies in Europe you can go ahead and search about that I've been reading about that uh, not reading but listening and um, it can really affect the safety of the uh, country so yeah that's Ireland if you want to go there you can expect a very safe safe environment yes let's move on and three we have Denmark Denmark one of the Scandinavian countries yeah Denmark has extremely low crime rates and People, including children, report feeling uh, they report feeling safe every time. Mm-hmm. Denmark crime rate statistics for 2021 was 0.80, mm-hmm. a 14.97 percent decline from 2020, and in 2020 it was 0.94, wow. a 17.09 percent decline Dick. from 2019, and the year before that, 2019 was. 1.14 a 13.21 percent increase from 2018 and the year before that 2018 was 1.01 a, a, uh, it was 18.72 percent decline from 2017 so yes um, regarding this case about Denmark um, we have to think about how the region actually is um, compared to this because the Denmark is actually 
grouped i guess with the scandinavian um, countries all right denmark norway sweden finland which are mostly happy why because again they're safe and um, there are just systems put by the government or by their countries by their people that uh, really work for them like for example um, here in these countries denmark norway sweden finland they have um, a more of a balanced economy you know um, their their system their government system enables the um, poorer i guess um, lower um, in income people have a, a lot better chance because they're they're provided with more education with provided with more jobs housing mm -hmm. you know these things basic things you know um, in these countries their strategy was if they provide for these kind of um, low-income people their basic needs they'll have more time to innovate they'll have more time to develop their their professions their skills which actually works you know um, I think this is their strength those four countries they have put focus on uh, they have really high tax rates which were used um, wisely to support those low-income people to give them their basic needs like housing food professions you know uh, jobs and uh, education especially when those are met they end up with the population much happier safer and they don't have time for a crime because why would they do crime if they already have the basic needs you know mm -hmm. you don't you, you you already have food in your table with for your family why should you mug somebody else for that right <laughs> unless you're very sick you still want to steal other people's stuff <laughs> so that's what ha what happened in these countries so um, we've been trying to study these countries because it's fascinating to see um, such a government system work because like for example um, not Denmark but Norway Norway um, years ago decades ago was one of the poorest countries in the world but they they, they, they turned around and um, did as De Denmark did and it's kind of the same strategy strategy they turned around and uh, really focused on the low-income people providing them with the basic needs and look at where they are now they're one of the richest people happiest people in the world mm -hmm. safest with the most um, developed careers you know um, they do have the highest taxes that's correct but in incorporated in a system like theirs it really works so now they're very safe they, they trust each other you know relatively well and um, they have all all needs met so that's why they have more space for innovation for development and therefore no crimes you can see the numbers like one percent zero point something percent those are unbelievable for countries like where we come from philippines or africa or asian countries these numbers never really <laughs> never really exist you know we yes. have more of like what 30 percent 20 uh, 20 percent crime rate mm -hmm. when we're lucky you know <laughs> <laughs> but on a, on a usual be higher than that. much higher yes so um, that's those are the comparisons for um, countries like this so Denmark yeah one of the Scandinavian countries system that worked and very low crime so go there and be uh, you know you you can expect to be very safe there as well number four and the last on our list is Portugal, Portugal. and like Iceland Portugal has a military force and it's police units are armed there you go okay in our data here portugal in 2022 has an increase of 14 percent compared to 2021 mm -hmm. and 2.4 percent compared to 2019 mm -hmm. okay um in the last 10 years 18 percent it was 18 percent lower than the average for the previous decade mm -hmm. okay Wow, wow. So see, Portugal, um, each country deals with crime quite differently, you know, because these are cultures we're talking about. So as I was talking about the system that worked for Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, it really doesn't work everywhere else, you know, just because just because it uh, gave them really good results doesn't mean that everybody should follow them. So the way Portugal did it is they armed the police. So they're a bit more strict you know, mm -hmm. with their um, law enforcement. Yes. Therefore, they can control crime a bit, uh, a bit better. Because, you know, there are countries that you really need to kind of enforce a little bit of um, armament, you know, like armed police like this. 
to make crime lower you know and uh, in contrast to like Iceland they can keep their crime rates very low even without their militaries you know mm-hmm. even without their um, you know armed police in the UK it's the same they don't arm their police uh, men mm-hmm. yeah so um, there are different cultures and different cultures call for different strategies to maintain crime rates so we can learn from here you know it, uh, it it, every country is different and you can expect different systems to work for different kinds of people so Portugal did it in such a way that they armed the police so people are just scared <laughs> to do crime <laughs> so they wouldn't mess with the police so if you go there if you travel or migrate there Portugal is one of the best countries to migrate to because it's not cold it never gets cold mm-hmm. it's good weather. good weather good food they have the sea and affordable yes. mm-hmm. and they offer the fastest um, citizenships mm-hmm. uh-huh. so they're really attracting a lot of migrants if you're ready to go there it's gonna be also a very a very safe environment with the armed police so don't do crime there <laughs> and that's what I advise you don't do crime there because you're probably gonna regret it <laughs> yes. so at least we learned something about um, uh, Portugal yes. and the other countries so yes. yes sharing our experience we see uh, policemen here in Europe policemen, yeah. yes they always roaming around oh all, all the time all yes all the time yes they have the, uh, they, they really invest time. They really invest time. They roam around even in the uh, smallest places. Mm-hmm. They really go around the it, it, in, in their cities, for example. Mm-hmm. They um, not only in the city centers, even in those um, parts where it's just open. I think we got cut off there. <laughs> okay, so continuing that story, um, even in those parts of the city where there's just um, you know plains in uh, fields mm-hmm. where no people are P- police still stroll around there with yes. their cars yeah so what was that story you were talking about yeah. i remember this one incident we, we were in in the city center in an old town and there was a drunken man who fell off yeah uh, collapsed, collapsed on, on the floor on the floor <laughs> then suddenly two policemen came by immediately he they asked him um, what, what happened? What happened? <laughs> is he able to is walk? Is he able to walk? And they assisted him right away. Yeah. They went out. They went out of the old town to the public place. Yeah. So they brought him out and took care of him. I don't know where, but <laughs> but the point here is, policemen are always um, fast responding. Yes. They're always around. So once crime is uh, once crime is you know around then they're also around to respond to that crime yes. unlike in our country like for example Philippines <laughs> the policemen you almost don't expect them to come unless somebody already died or something yeah. <laughs> then they come so it's kind of that because uh, we can't blame the, our country as well because um, they have a shortage of policemen not like in Europe they're everywhere yes. you know you can always um, count on them just being around and um, they have emergency numbers that's also very important yes, yes? 112 yes that's for whole, whole Europe and even, whole... Though, if, even if you don't have sim card even if oh, yes. you don't have Wi-Fi yes you can call works. that and um, ask for help call for police call for ambulance and anything about emergency emergency and that's for whole Europe not only for certain countries mm-hmm. they even teach this number to even to little kids, kids. Yes. yes they make them recite it and if there's uh, in any kind of emergency, I think this is very important because yes. you never know what's going to happen. Even even though, even if Europe is the safest region in the world, they're still prepared. You yes. know that uh, if any emergency comes, you call this number in anywhere in Europe, and you'll be um, responded by the police. Yes. So, yeah, that's um, safety in Europe, and hopefully that encouraged you to uh, come here and migrate because it is a very safe environment for your family for your job for your business and um, as you can see we have given you a bit of numbers already so you can try to fact check that in google so that um, you yourself can conclude if it is really safe here in europe so again this has been john rel 
of JIP Migrate. And if you want to migrate to Europe, J contact JIP Migrate. We enable possibilities for those who are ready to move. See you here in Europe. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast number three. See you again in the next podcast. Bye.